In fourth species, you work with a very limited vocabulary of suspension types. So we've already introduced the basic concept of the suspension, the preparation on the weak beat, the suspension itself on the strong beat, the resolution downward by step on the following weak beat. We identify suspensions based on the intervals of the, between, the, between the counterpoint and the conscious firmness of the suspension and the resolution. The preparation, we don't care about it as much. It can be any consonants, it doesn't matter. That doesn't determine the suspension type. The suspension type is based on the interval of the suspension and the resolution. So, and there are three of them. We don't use just any dissonance moving down by step. There are three of them that we use in upper counterpoint. Seven to six, four to three, nine to eight. So these are called seven six suspensions four three suspensions and nine eight suspensions. One of the best favors you can do yourself in working with uh, fourth species counterpoint, as quickly as possible, memorize these. So it's your, it's your basic vocabulary, it's the tools you have to work with. If you're writing upper counterpoint, your suspensions are seven six, four three, and nine eight. Seven six and four three are the most generally usable because they resolve to imperfect consonances. That means if you have a nice descending stepwise contus firmus, you can just chain those together up to a maximum of three, as we'll talk a little bit more about later. You cannot chain these. Well, you can chain these with other suspension types, but if you've got a step a downward descent in your contus firmus, you can't chain together multiple 9-8 suspensions in a row. It's going to sound like parallel octaves because the ear tends to connect those weak beats. We hear these, so let me just play a chain of sixths. Suspensions. So, uh, how long do you do this? Um, sorry. Uh, so, say it came from here. One of those is fine. If I do, if I keep going. That starts to sound just like parallel octaves. So these, we can string together multiple of these in a row, only one of those at a time. And because octaves in the middle of an exercise stand out a little bit, we use this one less. This is our main vocabulary. I've written here an artificial, really horrible contus firmus. We've never encountered this. I just wanted to show them with a preparation and then each one in turn. I'll play this. That, that was even more horrible than I realized when I was writing it up. So let's try that again. So there's the end of our 4 3. Now let's prepare the, uh, the 9 8. There we go. So that's our basic vocabulary suspensions. Now suppose that we're writing lower counterpoint. We have a much more restricted vocabulary. Here, Really what we're working with is the 2-3 suspension. It may be an octave larger and be instead a non-10 suspension. Those, of course, are simply the same. It's just a 2-3 an octave bigger. And this is our main one that we have to use with, to use. So again, memorize them. 2-3, non-10. We also have the 4-5, although as it resolves to a perfect consonant, that's one's we're, we're going to use it less just because of the sensitivity around the perfect consonants, and especially we're not going to chain them together for the same reason we just heard the octave. That's going to sound like parallel fits. Let's listen to these. Now let's say that we're, let me just pop this up an octave. This G an octave higher sound better than the 910. So those are our tools. Upper counterpoint, 7, 
six, four, three, nine, eight. Nine, eight, use sparingly. Lower counterpoint, two, three, nine, ten, four, five, use sparingly. Another option, we, another possibility. So those, those are the main things we want to work with, our main toolkit. We like the expressive dissonance on the downbeat. That's, uh, that's what this species is all about. There is another option for the ties, though. You may have noticed a few in this, in this upper example I've got. Every once in a while, there's no dissonance. So uh, right here, a tie with both of the notes consonant. A tie here, both of the notes consonant, but simply a consonant tie. Uh, you don't want to use too many of those. You want to use mostly dissonant suspensions, but uh, it's fine to include those as well, and it's better than breaking species, better than breaking often anyway, better than breaking into second species. And the nice thing about this is because we land on a consonance on the downbeat, there's no obligation. Dissonance creates obligation. When you have consonants, you're free, and so you can leap to another consonant, usually to set up another consonant suspension. In this case, we need to kind of kill some time because where we really want to go is there. So they, uh, they get some downward range, uh, break into second species for a bit before leaping up to continue in suspensions. There's one other thing I think in here. Ah, uh, yes, basically already covered it, but you'll recall in first species, maximum of three perfect consonances, three of the same perf parallel perfect consonances in a row. So parallel thirds, great, but three thirds in a row, you need to do something else. In second species, we were concerned downbeat to downbeat. A third on a downbeat, a third on the next downbeat, a third on the downbeat after that, maximum of three, then you need to do something else. That was less of a concern in third species, although again, we don't want to overdo it. Uh, in fourth species, the same thing occurs. You're free to have as many suspensions in a row as you want, but if you want to put the same type, so chaining seven sixes, maximum of three in a row, chaining four threes, maximum of three, same thing with the two threes and the nine twos.